Good morning. This is Akash, and I'll be speaking on behalf of my team. Uh, this particular project uh, had the target group of uh, the Indian Health Ministry in mind, and using this uh, platform, we'll try to answer the question whether the Health Ministry should invest more resources on buying new vaccines or should it invest the resources in buying new masks. So to begin with, we'll um, uh, we'll we'll start with. Uh, quick data exploration, which is looking at the peaks in number of new cases per million in the Indian data set. Now, if we look at our neighbors, we'll quickly notice that they also share similar trends, and that's mostly because of uh, uh, similar demographic. Right? So in this case, uh, we will select Nepal and Bangladesh to cross check. So India and Nepal, they seem to have similar trends and Nepal and Bang uh, uh, sorry, Bangladesh and India apparently also have similar trends in terms of the number of peaks or the time of the timing of the peaks. <clears throat> now, since we have confirmed that similar demographics have similar effects in, in, in their, um, in their uh, uh, number of cases, I think it's a uh, high time we can learn something from uh, countries in Asia that did well or did poorly so that we can learn from their mistakes. So we'll pick up countries from lower middle income and high income because lower middle income is where India falls in and high income is the, uh, are the countries basically that will have resources to deal with it. Now uh, we'll convert this to mean and we'll create two study groups. Why so? Because we want to pick maybe three countries who did poorly and three countries who did well. So in this case, uh, the number of new cases, I think uh, Georgia, uh, Israel and Jordan, three countries that did not do so well. So that will be our first study group. And the second one is uh, maybe Japan, Singapore and uh, Philippines who did well in terms of number of new cases. Uh, similarly, if we just take uh, a look at number of deaths again Georgia uh, Israel and Jordan did poorly as compared to uh, Philippines Japan and Singapore now uh, with that in mind we will start exploring further and hence we'll move on to the analysis page now in analysis page we'll take a look at the new data set that we have added which uh, which shines light on on the question that we'll, we'll try to answer so we'll switch this to new cases per million uh, we'll switch to India just to check and uh, this is the new data set that we have added which is basically the percentage of people who confirm that they wear masks in public places. Now the reason why we are taking a look at this is because we discovered during our uh, research that there are two, uh, two uh, groups basically uh, of countries that take a, take the mask approach differently. In case of India, it's more of a reactive approach, which means the number of cases go up, the number of people wearing masks goes up, and as it goes down, the other one also goes down. But there are countries like Japan, which basically have a consistent uh, usage of mask. Now, if we see that, uh, if, we, if we compare uh, this trend, so you'll see that uh, India shares this uh, trend with its neighbors, by the way. Again, confirming the fact that uh, similar demographics end up having uh, similar patterns, right? Now, if I look at India and Nepal, it seems like the, Nepal has also got this reactive approach to wearing masks, and Bangladesh has also got a reactive approach to wearing masks. Comparing this to the countries that we want to take inspiration from, uh, Philippines and Singapore, you'll notice that all of them have similar trends in mask wear, uh, wearing masks, basically. So they start from start right from the beginning and keep wearing masks as long as the cases are there. Doesn't matter whether cases go down, they keep wearing it. Now, if we look at the second study group that we created, it was Georgia, uh, Jordan, and Israel you will notice that these guys end up having a reactive approach as well. So for example, Israel here has a reactive approach. Jordan here has a reactive approach. 
and Georgia also ends up having a reactable portion. Now, if we compare all of them side by side, uh, we have another interesting discovery. So now, if you look at the mean of new cases versus new deaths per million, we'll notice that at the start, Japan, Philippines, and Singapore, all the countries that have this proactive approach to wearing masks ended up having really good, uh, uh, like did really well in terms of managing COVID and new cases basically. While Georgia, Israel, and Jordan did not. While at the second half, it seems that uh, the number of deaths, like number of cases, well, they stayed up, but the number of deaths significantly went down for everyone. So why is that? So this can be further explored if we look at the third attribute, which is um, which is mask use in terms of uh, uh, in in terms of bubble size. So if you look at the first half of the data, you'll notice that countries like Philippines, Japan, and Singapore have mask usage of 0.8, while the others have 0 0.6, 0 0.4, maybe 0.5. So these countries are those countries that did not wear masks or have had a reactive approach to it and hence ended up having new cases and ended up having new uh, deaths basically. Well, on the other hand, these guys did really well in terms of managing cases. Now, if you look at the second half, uh, it seems like everyone is doing well. No new deaths, like significantly less uh, new deaths. Why is that? So if we take a look at another data set here, which is people fully vaccinated. Um, that is an interesting trend. So at the start of the data set, uh, countries like Philippines, Singapore, and Japan did not have access to uh, uh, vaccines, but they stuck to wearing masks, so they did well. But as soon as every country started getting vaccinated properly, uh, cases eventually, like number of deaths, eventually went down. So this means that in the long run, Vaccine is the answer, while in the short short run, like uh, if you're quickly trying to manage cases and they are going up, uh, I think wearing masks makes makes sense. So this is the conclusion we have drawn from our study using the platform. Now, uh, there are other observations uh, that we can look at in terms of uh, continent, for example, Europe and uh, Asia. It seems... Uh, uh so uh yeah sorry we can get rid of this and we can add mask use now it seems that countries that are from asia uh prefer uh wearing masks as compared to uh, the countries in europe that uh do not prefer wearing masks and end up having more and more new cases. So the conclusion that we uh, could draw from this was that uh, because of public welfare system and uh, better healthcare system, uh, countries in Europe prefer cure over prevention while uh, it's the other way around in Asia basically. And we can also confirm this by grouping the data together. And if you see that countries in Asia prefer to use masks more as compared to countries in Europe. And the number of cases are significantly different over the period of time. Now, with the conclusion drawn, next is how urgently we need to make this decision for which we make use of our prediction models. So uh, our client can go ahead and uh, use our uh, prediction models to see uh, what kind of uh, what kind of growth and number of cases we are expecting. So based on that, they can they, they can make a call on their urgency. And uh, yeah, that, that was it basically. Thank you for listening. Um, as for the things that we have uh, uh, used from the class to, uh, to, to make sure that our, our, our project stays in line is avoid uh, making use of 3D graphs, of course. Uh, colors have been chosen chosen appropriately to make sense, like intuitive colors like red to show danger. 
especially in case of quadruplet because this shows the number of cases and, and things related to COVID. Uh, avoided using too much of interaction because of, again, like interaction requires documentation. So we used a one-way interaction mostly, which is like panel-based interaction. And of course, for zooming in and out, we use our uh, bottom graph. And uh, we did not want to waste too much space. So we have reused the space again and again based on what the user is trying to do. So for example, in our analysis page, uh, the scatter plot shifts from correlation graph to correlation scatter plot to uh, a bubble, bubble chart based on like how many countries you have selected. So if you have more than one country selected, it basically switches. And we also switch the main and the sub graph using this button. So again, like a reuse of space. Um, other than that, the work division was Andreas and I uh, split the coding work 50-50 and uh, uh, I oversaw the uh, software development in general. Uh, Shanming helped us with uh, uh, fine tuning our predictions. He helped us with uh, interpolating the mask data and uh, he also helped us develop the story that I just uh, presented to you. Uh, thank you for listening. That's all.